Hello everyone, and welcome to the 998th episode of Hermitcraft. What a thing to say that is, right? And my friends, if it seems like the episodes are slowing down a little bit, well, they are. We've got that big episode 1000 coming up, and it is going to be a special. So stay tuned. After this episode, we're going to have a Q&A episode full of the questions you asked in the previous one, and then we'll be doing our special. But for now... We're here to check out the theatre as I've been doing some building in the area and hearing the sound of doors being destroyed. This build has come with a maintenance cost. As you know here in Aqui, the priority is looks and that means there's actually lots of dark spots where mobs can spawn. And so zombies make their way in here. But fortunately, this fella is still alive being a champ selling some tickets. But yes, I periodically hear the... The boom boom sound of the doors breaking and I rush in here and I'm always too late and they take the doors away before I can replace them. It is rather sad, but it gave me an idea. I had a brainwave, right? You can actually prevent this from happening using a data pack because the ability of a zombie to break down a door is actually a part of its MBT tags which can be modified through data packs. So that is probably something that's going to end up appearing on Vanilla Tweaks. I don't know if it'll be on Hermitcraft, but yeah, it's a great idea for Vanilla Tweaks. Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me, let me out of here. No! Do not explode! Oh! Oh! It just fell from up there! What is up there? <laughs> oh! Creep it! There should be no place for anything to spawn in here, and it just... I got no idea. It just fell from like the chandelier. It can't spawn on glass. <sighs> that was hilarious. Well, I guess I now got some repairs to do, but let's talk about what's happening out the back of this area where we got some leftover plot from purchasing Wells Mart. What you're going to see here is nothing like the glory of the rest of Aqui. What I wanted to create was something that felt a little bit more cobbled together, low scale, the kind of thing that you might find in a village or a small town. And that is a marketplace that has been cobbled together with other elements around it. That's why we've got this little building here sticking out the side. We have another raised floor building over here. And what I wanted to do was create something that felt sort of industrial, like there was a loading bay out the back of the theater, and then it had been converted into a marketplace as well. So that's why we got this kind of bringing together of two different build styles in a small space. And the story here is really going to be told by the details. We've got to put in market stalls, we've got to create some places where things are loaded and unloaded, and one of the big things that's going to help with that is probably the floor, but those details are going to come later. I just wanted to show you this first of all, and also, yeah, I'm expecting you to comment on that block. I agree. I agree. It needs to be changed to glass. So this will be our project for the episode to wrap and finish off this area over here. But first of all, we have a couple of other things to take care of. And one of those is myth busting. Okay, if you've been a long time subscriber to this channel, you'll know that I've been doing myth busting for years where we investigate the new updates of Minecraft. And so, as tradition goes, I need you all to help me out of it. So like we did with the q and I, you, 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 I want you to put hashtag myth in your comment down below and I will search for all of those and ask me a question you want answered about 1.17. What things do you want to see me investigate and find out in future episodes of Myth Busting? So thank you for participating with your questions and thank you to all of you who participated in the last episode, the Q&A one. The next episode, number 999, will have all of your answers. Well, you know, not all of them because I'm only answering 99 of those questions, but it was a lot of fun and something we should do more often. But anyway, here's something I haven't done in a while. I need to go around and just check up all, on all the profits again. Two stacks and 10 diamonds. And you know what? About 90% of this comes from the concrete factory. This thing has really been the money maker this season. And whoa, there goes Corralis, my partner in crime. And like that, he disappears into the distance. Oh, I can still see him. Anyways, let's turn our attention back over here. Before I actually start to do anything more of my own design, there is something very special involving a lot of banners that we are going to build 
out the back here. It will be an advertisement for another company that exists in this area. But this is something that Alpine Shell put together and it completely blew me away. It's also going to take me a very long time to figure out. Well, that, my friends, was a big understatement. This took me a lot of time. Admittedly, most of it was at first when I was trying to suss out how to make these banners and making a lot of incorrect ones and then throwing them away. But eventually, I kind of got into a groove. And the way to look at these banners is to see them in sixths. So if I go ahead and just chuck... Wait a minute, that's the same color dye. That's not going to be very helpful. There we go. So you can see half of it over there and another half over here. And what I'm actually going to do is just dye this thing to try and show you the six different sections that are available. Let's get another color for the bottom bit. One of the things that you have to do is avoid using this one right here because it doesn't actually cover up the middle. So the middle is usually defined by putting a dye down the side and then whatever the background of the banner is. There's also a couple of other ones here that you use on occasion, like that corner and the top corner. So now with this demonstration, you can kind of see the six different parts of this grid, and you can think of those like pixels in pixel art. And so when we combine several of these together, that's when we get a bigger picture. And you saw a little bit of a preview of it right there. Let's see if we can suss out just from looking at it in here what it's going to be. Now I actually picked these shulker boxes and put this down the side here to kind of mark up the grid and the overall scale of the image. So what you're seeing here is each part of that. However, the top layer is actually hidden by the one that's above it. So with exception to the very top layer the pixels that you're actually going to see will be the bottom four each time but on the top one it's all six and this exercise has actually made me realize that this is something i could utilize in the future to convert pixel art to banners and then bring them into the world i feel like i just developed a minecraft skill today but we've of course got to place these all in and let's do that with our camera account and watch it come in a little bit at a time Okay then, what do we think? It's Moopop. However, I believe something definitely went wrong down the bottom here. In fact, I think I can spot it. These two are the wrong way around. Because two of them are identical. When I were moving them carefully into my inventory, they stacked together, which was a problem, of course. And that, I think, actually puts them in the correct order now. Awesome. And one slight problem, from a distance, there's nothing there. And bam, it just loads into existence because of the render distance for banners. Uh, also, now that we move back, there's definitely like an odd pixel right there. Although, no, that's actually extending out from the P. So maybe it is all correct. And how cool is that? And again, this was made by Alpine Shell. I've just brought it here to Hermitcraft. And this, this will be a skill set I want to put into my arsenal now to be able to create these pixel artworks for future projects. So with that glorious detail taken care of, I would like to turn our attention to this area again and specifically the floor. We are going to bring the road into this space and kind of enhance the industrial feel that this cyan terracotta has brought here. And yes, the very first thing we take care of is that odd block up the top there. I've also moved the chest monsters out to this road and expanded the road around the corner here where we have this. I spent too long scratching my head trying to think of the name of it and I think it's called a security gate or a boom gate. I don't know what the official term is for it but you know you see it when you go into a car park entrance and that tells the story of what's going on over here as vehicles will come through this area including our own little forklift truck which is admittedly a bit too big for this area. It looks like it would have trouble maneuvering however it tells the story. And, you know, I don't actually have a good way to get into this thing. I'm going to have to place a block and then hop up like so. And i got to say, look at that driving wheel. <laughs> that is a perfect little bit of detail. I've also been thinking there might just be a little too much orange. So around the front here, the wall block is thicker than the fence. I actually think that looks better. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep... Oh, well, whoa. what was that about? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to keep that changed. There you go. We've got a forklift in the space. 
And up the top of these stairs, I've thrown in just uh, a few blocks. It's like, uh, you know, a storage area now. And that just goes so far to throw in like a bunch of blocks that clearly are just storage lying around. And it fills out this space really, really well. So now it feels like an industrial loading bay. I'm really happy about it. And I've gone around and put in some light sources by hiding them underneath carpets like this. It's very subtle. Originally, I had a lot of these lanterns hanging from above and I didn't think that that worked. But anyway, that is the industrial area. And now what we're going to do is put a sign to lead this place into the market. And we're going to go with probably exactly what you expected, letters on banners again. And I went with brown and white because it kind of reflected the colours in the background, which also means it doesn't pop out as much. But I think it works. It's fine. Yeah, it, it looks good. So now we get to shift our focus to the actual market area back here where we're going to set up some stalls and then decorate those stalls with some details to kind of sell the market story. Not actually going to be putting a shop together here, but while I am working on all of these details and builds we've got to do, I had the opportunity to meet up with Corrales earlier and check out what my neighbor has been doing over nearby our base. Neighbors, everybody needs Sheshwam. Hello. One of my best neighbors. Hi, welcome to the port of Corrales. Uh, and here we have the Amerigo Vespucci, Ooh. the beautiful Italian vessel. Don't, don't you like it? <laughs> I was just admiring the uh, the ice cream truck because it's hey. just so appealing <laughs> and I want ice cream right now. But well, like, I, <gasps> what's going it's on It's not here? open for business, but it, it's definitely an ice cream truck. Yeah, like, I mean, you know, like uh, Italian vessel you need, just need to have like this ice cream truck outside because Ooh, gelato. gelato. They yep. love gelato. So, chocolate gelato, man. What's your favorite flavor? <laughs> I would go for chocolate or Nutella. Uh, oh, Nutella flavor. Nice. That is so... Oh, man. Chocolate oh, is mine. Kind of like, chocolate is mine. Oh, welcome to the port of Kerales. We've got the beautiful vessel. We've got taxis. And this is a part <laughs> where I don't think you've seen... Uh, there's a lot of sugars. Uh, I'm building a little marina just just next door. There's buses. I'm, That's I'm cool. astounded by the details here. Like to just make those diagonal windows with the banners. That is pure genius. Do, 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 you know how much time, time it takes to, to do that? It's I, just a, dude. But, I but know. Once, once you do one, you can just copy it, right? I am but, gonna but show still. you something involving banners. Okay, please, after we're done here, do. and you'll you'll understand how long it took. <laughs> Sheshwe, so so I'm I'm having a little bit of um, of a, a question, an ask Sean to ask you. Yes. I've been building this marina, right? And it's kind of getting closer to your beautiful brewery. And I would love to incorporate that into the city somehow. And we did talk about it previously, right? So 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 would that be possible for me to do? Would you, you can mind? do whatever you like, man. Like hook it up, I say, hook it up. Because yeah, when we travel in this direction, the brewery like loads in at the end of the marina yes it does and I, I was just thinking like having like this, this this avenue just going all the way up with beautiful trees on each side and then bam the brewery yeah that's an amazing idea dude what you think about the marina by the way i love it dude there is just so much detail here i feel like i could just like stop and then spend ages like looking at the snow oh there's even like even when you go inside there's yeah. details. It's oh, a kitchen. We've got oh. we got stuff. Could Every go? little bit of space is utilized. Yes, indeed. Toilet. Um, you can close the door. I don't mind. Like there we go. No. <laughs> Doing my business. Wait, stop! Stop <laughs> looking in. <laughs> Love it. You can also see the tree in this direction. A mumbo. Uh, the omega tree. Yeah. Like, I mean, the thing about this, like I, when I did a marina last episode, people were like, they couldn't really grasp how close everybody is to each other yeah um, until you kind of notice like okay there's there's uh east Coast base there we have bambo's base everybody's so close and i love that i've said it before i've said it again i i think that is the best the best thing in this season Besides definitely XB. definitely it's XB. my favorite thing as well Please. yeah what's he doing he, <laughs> he went he decided to be a true hermit <laughs> he's on a different server but uh <laughs> but yeah <laughs> i love it no, so that, that was kind of my idea. Uh, and hopefully that's going to turn out really nice. Uh, I'm sure it will, man. It, like, this, this area is just beautiful. I love it. I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you, Shashram. Thank you, my dude. Thank you for the little tour. I can't wait to no see what worries. happens over here. I'm sure it's going to be gorgeous. I hope so. Did you come through the pool? 
Yeah, I'm just behind you. Hi. Oh, you're oh, invisible. You're... Hit me. Oh, you're you invisible. See... Do you see me? I don't. So welcome back to the marketplace. I kind of envision three phases of this project. The first one is essentially the layout, which comes with some details. The idea here is that we want to create a bunch of different stools and so different combinations and blocks and ideas kind of just make them all a little bit unique from one another, right? Also over here we've got like something that's more of a service with the smeltery looking thing back there. You know, you've got to use your imagination a little bit. Now the second phase will involve the floors. I think I want them to tell a bit more of a story so we might have things more orderly around the back behind the stalls and then we might try and change this up so there's some more pathways that become clear. However the floor as it is, is kind of good here and then phase three is to bring inhabitants to the marketplace. So phase two, the floors, which you really won't feel the difference, but there are more of the roughened up textures here among the stone. Some other blocks have now been placed kind of behind these work areas to make them look more established. And I've also brought in the mini blocks, which are gonna feature a lot more in a moment as when we bring in inhabitants to stand behind here, we're gonna use armor stands and we're gonna use more of those block heads. But I put quite a lot of them in this area and I really enjoyed it. Just doing something totally different from the norm, creating an area with tons of details. It is a lot of fun. So these block heads that I brought in are in fact mob heads. So we've got lots of familiar characters in the area now and it brings everything to life. But one of the things that's really cool here is the lever armor. The colors on them are a little bit customized and that actually goes quite a ways like the wandering trader over here doesn't actually quite match his hood and I think we could change that let's go and take that back nope <laughs> I want the leggings as well so with a crafting bench and the recipe book it's like super easy to make new armor right and then if you want to dye it what you can do is shift click in the colors like so but then also drag them about and get stronger amounts of blue or another color and so if we want to just make this a little bluer we'll go with that for now yeah, you see, now it's just a bit too strong. It might be in need of some cyan or light blue, but basically with this method like this, you can pretty much figure out exactly what you need to get the specific color that you want. I ain't gonna mess around with it on that one too much now. I'm just gonna leave it like so. But it's made for some really nice colors that complement the different mobs that we've got in the area. And there's a few over here I haven't done yet. The next one I wanna do is the blaze. And so orange and yellow would be a pretty good mix. I think I want it to be stronger with the orange and I can just drag it around like that. I can make it a little bit lighter if I wanted to or alternatively a little bit darker. I really like this system. I think we're going to go with that there. And so now we've got all of our custom fitted attire right here. You may have noticed that I haven't gone with the boots. I kind of like the way the arms poke out and I like it when it does that with the feet as well. Feels like you see more of the limbs, but there you go. That, that one matches really well, actually. Oh, and of course, this derpy face right here is doing a face farm. That just makes total sense. And yeah, I think I've given them all some on-camera time now. And, you know, I think it's a very successful project. We've got <laughs> a detailed marketplace area with inhabitants, and the whole thing was a lot of fun to put together. And so, my friends, this actually brings my activities in the area of Aqui to a close. And uh, I think it's a really great close, actually, because this was so not how I normally do things, right? It's really nice to dip into different building styles and go for details instead of, you know, farms and technical projects all the time. And now that I've collected all of my shulker boxes from this area, I've got a whole bunch of junk organizing and cleaning up to do again. You know how it goes. <laughs> what do you think of this right here though? Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you like the marketplace. Personally, I love it. I think it turned out really great. And well, my friends, it's another shorter than usual episode from me as I am winding down and preparing to start on episode 1000. It is coming. It'll be here soon, don't you worry. <laughs> if you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to leave a like. As always, thank you for your tremendous support on this series and I'll see you soon for another episode of Hermitcraft. Bye-bye.